US B-1B Lancer bombers and fighter have flown close to North Korea's east coast to demonstrate the military options available to defeat any threat, the Pentagon has said. The flight was the farthest north of the demilitarized zone between the Koreas that any US fighter jet or bomber had flown in the 21st century. Yeah, this amid more saber rattling from the U.S. We're just seeing this in the last half hour. U.S. Air Force B-1 bombers out of Guam, as well as fighter jets out of Okinawa, Japan, flying over international waters, but what is significant to the east of North Korea, that is to the north of the DMZ. It's the furthest they've flown north uh, in many years, and also I think kind of significant, it's in the same area where North Korea launched that missile test last week. So a lot of tension on both sides of the DMZ right now. North Korea's foreign minister taking a defiant tone, addressing the UN General Assembly Saturday, calling President Donald Trump's speech at the UN earlier this week reckless and violent. He tried to insult the supreme dignity of my country by referring it to a rocket. By doing so, however, he committed an irreversible mistake of making our rockets visit to the entire U.S. mainland inevitable all the more. None other than Trump himself is on a suicide mission. His fiery words a direct response to Trump's provocative speech four days ago at the U.N. when he said this. We will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. Kim Jong-un himself reacted to that with a direct statement calling Trump a, quote, mentally deranged U.S. dotard. <laughs> Also on Saturday, U.S. Air Force bombers escorted by fighter jets flew in international airspace off the coast of North Korea. According to the Pentagon, Saturday's show of force demonstrated the range of military options available to Trump when it comes to dealing with the grave threat presented by the North Korean nuclear program. The U.S. drill follows what officials and experts said was a small earthquake near North Korea's nuclear test site on Saturday which was probably not man-made, easing fears Pyongyang had exploded another nuclear bomb just weeks after its last one. Peninsula. Late Saturday Korean time, there were reports of an earthquake in northeastern North Korea, not far from where the regime tests its nuclear devices. 3.5 on the Richter scale, shallow. Chinese authorities said it was that related to an explosion. But then South Korea weighed in, the United States weighed in, and they're saying it's a natural natural quake. But they're saying it might be a geological shift related oh, Trump to is that nuclear test that occurred there with earlier North this counterpart. He's taken aim at remarks suggesting North Korea might test a hydrogen bomb at sea. He's talking about a massive weapon exploding over the ocean, Pacific Ocean, which causes tremendous, tremendous calamity. The spat began on Tuesday when Trump addressed the UN General Assembly. He told delegates that if the US is forced to defend itself or its allies, it will totally destroy North Korea. Kim responded to that speech by threatening the highest level of hardline countermeasure in history. The North's foreign minister said the threat could be a reference to a hydrogen bomb test in the Pacific. Russia's foreign minister has urged restraint from both sides. Sergei Lavrov said, North Korea's nuclear and military gambles are unacceptable. He suggested a neutral European country or the UN Secretary General to act as an intermediary. He said it would be better for the sides to meet and talk rather than make threats. The Prime Minister of the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific has also condemned North Korea's latest threat. The recent testing 
of the ballistic missiles by uh, the D Democratic People's Republic of Korea over the Pacific Ocean is an insult to the people of the Pacific. We are ocean people. Therefore, we denounce any pollution and contamination of our ocean that our Pacific peoples depend on for our livelihoods. The Prime Minister said maintaining the health of the Pacific Ocean is not only for the sake of their self-interest, but in everyone's interest. He's very much in favor of uh, the denuke of North Korea. And uh, we're talking about different things. We have some things we're going to be talking again soon. U.S. President Donald Trump says he is taking a wait-and-see attitude towards North Korea, but added that he will not put up with Pyongyang's continued nuclear expansion. South Korean President Moon Jae-in said that he and Russian President Vladimir Putin agreed that North Korea's nuclear buildup was bad for all parties. He said, President Putin and I also agreed that the missile development pursued by North Korea is a wrong path, and it is an urgent task to ease tension on the Korean peninsula. The Russian president said that North Korea's nuclear ambitions are a violation of UN resolutions and pose a threat to the entire region. He said, we are not recognizing the nuclear status of North Korea. Pyongyang's nuclear missile program grossly violates the resolution of the UN Security Council, undermines the non-proliferation regime, and poses a security threat in Northeast Asia. However, the Russian president stopped short of agreeing to more sanctions against Pyongyang, something that Mr. Moon was seeking. <laughs> Mr. Putin said it's impossible to solve the Korean Peninsula's problems by only sanctions and pressure, and that we should not succumb to emotions and drive North Korea into a corner. One should stay calm and more than ever, more than ever that is, and avoid steps which may escalate tensions. Meanwhile, in Estonia, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg called on North Korea to abandon its missile and nuclear programs following the country's sixth and largest nuclear test of an advanced hydrogen bomb.